Welcome to General Woe's Let's Play Napoleon Total War, The Egyptian Campaign, Episode 5. I've taken two more cities of the four city cluster. The battles were insignificant because the military has all fled into Zagazik, my next target. Uh, there were also some wandering armies uh, that I fought in the desert. Um, and they gave Mr. Dessert a new uh, achievement type thing for being very heroic. And over here, the British have landed. Lord Nelson himself has arrived with a massive fleet and a very, very tiny army on foot. Consisting of two cannon, two units of foot and something unidentified, probably a general. But before I get to that, first let me get to the historical anecdotes. This one's about the musket accuracy. Um, as, you, as you may know, muskets are not very accurate. And there are a few reasons for this. One of them is the bayonet. The bayonet simply was in the way. The soldiers could not see what they were doing with a big knife where the uh, sights should be. Then there was the need for rapid fire. Now, the first volley would be the most accurate because it would be loaded properly in a clean gun. And each consecutive shot would be less accurate as the soldiers would be under more stress and the gun would get dirty. Then there were misfires. They were quite common, sometimes up to 20%. And the chance would increase after each shot. If this went unnoticed in all the noise, a soldier could happily load another round on top of the round already there with potentially disastrous results. And the most obvious reason for the inaccuracy is, of course, the fact that the rounds were smaller than the barrel. If uh, the ball would fit tightly, the gun would need cleaning every few shots. So, because the ball was smaller, it would bounce around and then fly in whatever direction it was bouncing in when it uh, left the barrel. The rifles always had problems with reloading because the, uh, the ball had to be a tight fit. Otherwise, it would not touch the ridges on the inside of the barrel, which would make it spin and increase its range and accuracy. So, despite the, the rifles being superior weapons, only a fraction of the troops actually use them, because you still need rapid fire, which you can only get from muskets. Rifles became easier to load with an invention made about half a century after the Napoleonic Age, the minier, or mini-ball. These rounds were thin and could easily be loaded. The bottom of the round is hollow, as you can see on the picture. When, uh, when firing, the explosion from the powder would cause the bottom to expand and make a tight fit. This invention allowed the rifle to replace the musket completely. During the American Civil War, every soldier was equipped with a rifle powered with a mini ball. But how accurate were muskets really? Well, the Prussians did a scientific experiment to find out in 1782. They created a target 10 by 6 foot, and that's about 3 by 2 meters. Then they would fire a hundred shots at this target from varying distances and count the amount of hits. These were the results. From 100 paces, 60% would hit. From 200 paces, only 40% would hit. From 300 paces, only 25%. And this is also the maximum killing range of the musket. Now, results in actual combat wouldn't be as good. These were done under testing conditions and there would be plenty of time to reload after each shot. So let's take a look at actual battle statistics. These come from the Battle of Vittoria from 1813. This was a battle in the Peninsula Campaign when Wellington was driving the, uh, Napoleon's forces from uh, Spain and Portugal. Now, during this battle, the British fired three and a half million rounds. So that's about 60 per soldier. Normally, every soldier would fire around 20 rounds. These rounds caused 8,000 enemy casualties. So the math would come down to about 450 rounds for each enemy casualty. Back to the game. I sent forth Kleber, one unit of chasseurs à cheval and four units of line infantry to deal with the British. 
The British are facing me with one general, two cannons, six pounders on foot, and two units of line infantry. The odds are about 50-50. And given the choice, I'd pick the army the French have, because I'm not too impressed with, with what the British have to offer. They have too many cannons for an army that size. However, despite that, I had a lot of trouble defeating them, so I asked for advice on the Something Awful forums on the topic that goes with these videos. I've linked this topic in the video description. Eager to try out these new strategies, I forgot to record the battle, so I'm using the game's built-in replay function to show you what happened. The only disadvantage of this is that you can't see me give the orders. To the battlefield! The battlefield is completely flat, so there's no hills for me to hide behind. There's only one single building right in the middle of the enemy deployment zone. Um, one of the strategies uh, suggested was to sit back and let the enemy infantry approach me. So that's what I'm going to try here. I've put my men all the way back and uh, on my right flank you can see that I have my uh, my general and my chasseur. You can see it on the radar map in the top right of the screen. And here we have the enemy. Two units of line infantry and he's got the, uh, the cannons on the sides. And behind that is General. And I'm safely out of range of the cannon. See, there is my General and my uh, Chasseur. But he's not doing anything. The game's on fast forward and he's happily sitting there. And I can't blame him. Because I'm the attacker here. I want to get rid of these bridges before they do any damage. So all they have to do is uh, sit still for an hour and, and they will win. Sir! Sir, our general is under attack. Close there, but um, now I'm trying to move my cavalry up behind the uh, the enemy so that they can perhaps uh, start shooting in the back. But all the time, the enemy is still sitting still. And so am I. So since this wasn't working, I'm going to try a different strategy that was also suggested in the topic where I would split my army into three forces. Two groups of infantry and one mounted group with the general and the chasseur. You can see me um, moving them on the radar map. That way I can attack the enemy from three directions at the same time. And he has only two cannons, so... Uh, probably both cannons will concentrate fire on one unit or they will um, divide their fire between two of my units. All the enemy is doing now is turning to face what he thinks is the strongest of my group of infantry. Still, he's not moving forward. So let's skip forward a bit until something interesting happens. Whilst marching forward, I got a little too close. And the enemy opened fire with his cannons. However, he killed no one. You can see all the men getting up and getting back in line. At so this distance, of course, the cannons are not very deadly. Not sure what the cannons are doing here. They, they don't look very ready with the horses interspersed between the guns. And try, I think he's trying to limber or unlimber them or something. And I think this is an opportune moment for my cavalry to start killing them off now that they can't fire. So I send forward my chasseur and behind them the general to deal with them. Sir! Artillery reporting. Now they're a bit too eager, and now they're moving right in front of the muskets. But the cannon has been destroyed. There's still some cannon crew left, but the actual cannons are broken and useless. So, time to retreat. 
cannon crew by itself is not much to worry about. It's just a group of men with sabers. These are quite eager. And now they're dead. Yep, I think that counts as destroyed. I did lose a few horsemen in, in that, uh, that attack, but I think it was worth it. Now I retreat back to a safe position behind the enemy. On the radar map you can see I have completely surrounded the enemy. He has units coming at him from three sides. These men are now running into musket range. I'm using a very thin formation in case he opens fire on me. Most of the time there's only one man that will get hit by the cannonball. Instead of three men in a row. I will take the first hits. Deployment I guess also means you get more shots off. Because the front, the front row so much longer. The enemy general now tries to flank me. And in the back you can see my other uh, infantry units approaching this cannon. Which for some reason has not opened fire. I think this one's glitched out too. Here I've gone into square formation. The general is not attacking but try and get past me. Not without casualties. Cannon is destroyed. My sister has helped out as well. They can go now. Now the uh, line infantry move forward to charge, which is what they're good at. However, with the current deployment, they are in a perfect position for a little hammer and anvil. The units on the right form the anvil, and my units on the left form the hammer and they will be completely squashed between them. And my chasseur too, and even my general, charge in to deal with them and finish them off completely. The glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. The game now pauses because this is the announcement of victory and now begins mopping up. Let's go watch some of the carnage. That man is not lucky. Watch. Post-battle statistics indicate that I lost 100 men and the enemy killed 84 of those. And now the enemy has 8 men remaining. I'd like to thank everyone for posting in the topic. Couldn't have done it without you. See you next time.